Hello, everyone. Uh, what's happening? This I'm Brooks. I'm the rocket scientist. Hi. <laughs> and I'm Dane, the theologian. This is the Root Podcast, where we tell myths, legends, folk tales, and stories about everything, so that you can benefit from age-old wisdom in your daily life and training. I want to document something. Is that? Is that Brooks and I are really trying to do a better job of branding our podcast and and writing effectively, and maybe this is the start of a better copywritten branded podcast. Right here, the 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 time that I remembered to do it after the time that I forgot to do <laughs> yeah. it and, and said it really shittily. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like the good time. Well, um, you know if. If this is the start of it, we're getting into fall. What does fall mean, Miller? New hats from Earthfed Muscle. Oh, new hats from Earthfed <laughs> yeah. Muscle. And which is way. And which is way. Which that is means way. I'm have seven protein shakes a day <laughs> and 15 waffles. <laughs> 15 waffles. Because that's Get, exactly what happens. That's what you need. That's what you need. How much creatine do you need to take? Uh, 0.1 grams per kilogram. So for somebody that weighs 100 kilos, they should be taking about 10 grams. That's of, me. 10 yeah. grams for me. How so. much how much collagen should I be taking in addition to my whey protein? Uh, so in addition to whey, if if you were consuming, a real simple trick would be one gram of protein per kilo or or two grams per kilo, um, so about two hundred and twenty grams of protein. So you should be having, typically for every ten grams, you should be having two grams of collagen. So 200 so, grams of protein for me and two grams of collagen per 10 grams? Yeah, so you'd be around yeah. 20 to... 40. 40, 40, yeah. 40, yeah. That's, 40 gra- that's four scoops? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of collagen. Keep so, your joints. To keep your joints. And, and that does not count towards your protein Protein intake. Yeah. That makes sense. That's fire, bro. That's fire. Yeah. That's what else does fall mean? Fire? Cutting wood. Yeah, actually, cutting wood. And, uh, I'm splitting wood this weekend. Nice. Yeah. Are you using a, a log splitter? Power splitter? Yeah, of course I am. I'm not, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I split everything by hand still. I actually cut everything with a cross cut saw. <laughs> <You> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to talk about fire today. Uh, before we talk about fire, you should go on to Earth Fed Evolutions, which is our Facebook group. It is within our Facebook page and it is is it's really legit for just posting stuff that you are looking to get some support on so you know if you're if you're looking to make some changes in diet if you're looking to make some changes in your workouts if you're looking for some advice throw it in there totally judgment free any type of ideas that we've had people comment about how they take products as well like little recipes leather working yeah literally whatever stuff you're starting to do like yeah just just throw it in there I got jiu-jitsu. I'm going to do a jiu-jitsu tournament next weekend, I think, oh, up in New York. Put that in there. I got to put it in there. I just want to make sure my back is okay enough to do it before I say I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we're talking about fire. So the classic fire myth is Prometheus. Remember Prometheus? Yeah. Do you remember how he got fire back to uh, man? He stole the fire from Zeus. What did he steal it in? It's actually There's actually multiple stories. So... Uh, a cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> he stole it. Supposedly, he stole it in uh, like a reed. He kept okay. it inside of a reed and, and brought it back down uh, to earth to give to man. And do you remember how he got punished? No. This is a good one. He, they took him up to the uh, kunos. <laughs> oh. He did karate? <laughs> how? What? Do you remember how he got punished? Wasn't he... Come on, Jason. Do you need to to push the boulder up? Or am I thinking? No, that's somebody else. That's somebody else. It's a good guess, though. So, so he. That's Sisyphus. Yeah, this was this was. uh, They took him up to the highest. Jason knows his Greek mythology and the highest peak of the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, He was stuck through with a spike oh, yeah. to the to the back of the to the mountain yeah and an eagle comes every day and pulls it to out. eat his liver and every day it grows back so that he is eternally tormented by by the eagle eating his liver but then and, and that's where kefir grains comes from that's where kefir grains comes from yeah that's the story <laughs> that's where they came from. all right thanks everybody <laughs> <laughs> um so, uh, so, so that has a actually, and, and it, 
And the the end of that story, which I had never heard before, but the end of the Promethean story is that he knows that it's going to come to an end someday. And that's like the end of a world age. Yeah. And it's really similar to Loki and Ragnarok. Loki is the character most associated with fire. Right. And, and the bringer of fire. And, and Loki in at Ragnarok ushers in the, the different age. He is actually on the side of the bad guys. Okay. Right? So yeah, he's yeah. like, he's the trickster. He's on the side of the bad guys. He comes in, brings all the hosts of hell, and they win the battle over the gods okay. of Asgard. But so this that's, is stories. These stories are consistent across multiple different. Yeah, cultures. and that's we're going to talk about the Native American trickster, which is typically coyote. Um, sometimes ends up being rabbit, raven in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, and um, actually in the in the southeast was rabbit, and in the southeast rabbit got bastardized to brer rabbit, who the Africans who were brought over as slaves. Uh, made into folktales that were essentially like the same kinds of stories, right. trickster stories. Right. Um, so anyway, so tricksters, but it's also good to note that in most of the Native American traditions, um, the tricksters also created the world. Okay. They also brought about the like the physical existence of the world. So in the modern day world, Dave Chappelle actually created this Dave world. Dave Chappelle created the world, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, so there's... Um, Okay, so the so the the story we're going to tell is from the Thompson one of the Thompson River River tribes, um, which is in the it's it's BC so British it's Columbia a, Kamloops Thompson River split ran right by my house in Kamloops. There you go, BC. Yeah, BC represent and there's there's was with Coyote further north from them was Raven. Okay, but this story is the same story, Thompson River. Further north towards Alaska yeah, and all the way down into Georgia. The Cherokee had the same story. And the only thing that changes is rabbit, crow, rabbit, raven, coyote. Yeah. All right. So much of the, much of the continent's coyote. So the story is one day coyotes hanging out with all of the animal friends and they're up on a, a mountain and coyote looks out and he sees in the distance in the south, he sees a light and he doesn't know what a light is at that point because, it, you know, everything's dark except for when the sun's out. But by some process of divination, because he's, he's coyote and he can do whatever he wants, he figures out. Oh, that's Pattern fire. recognition. Pattern recognition. Yeah. He figures out that's fire. So he's like, all right, everybody, let's go down to the fire people. We got something to do tonight. So he gets his crew together and he also makes himself a headdress. And his headdress is made from pine shavings caked together with uh, t- pine tar. So really flammable stuff, right? Yeah. And then he makes the the strands coming down um, cedar bark, strips of cedar bark, right? So he goes in, they see the fire people, and these aren't real people. These are these are, you know, people made of fire most likely. But the fire people are dancing, and the, the, the coyote and the animal people come in, and they're like, "Hey, can we dance too?" And they go, "They're like, okay, yeah, yeah." So coyote and the, and the animals come around. They start dancing around the fire. He complains, "Hey, it's, uh, there's not enough light." I can't see. I can't see well enough. You guys got to make the fire bigger. And the fire people are like, all right. So they go dance a little bit more. They make the fire a little bit bigger. So Coyote cl- complains four times. Always four, right? Mm-hmm. How many levels in the mountain? Yeah, four. Four, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you plan that. So, so Coyote, Coyote complains four times. And the fourth time, the, the, fire, the fire people make it a huge, huge fire. And everybody starts dancing, getting crazy. And they're like, hey, hey, stop getting so close to the fire, Coyote. And all the other animals are like, you know, they all wink at each other. And they're like, yeah, we're too hot. We're going to go wait outside. Right. So they all go wait outside. And Coyote's just getting crazy. And they're like, whoa, whoa, stop getting so close to the fire. And he's like, I'm not getting close to the fire. He starts dancing over to the door. And he swings the headdress around. And it catches oh, fire. fire. And he sprints out the door. And once he sprints out the door... The fire people start chasing him. They're like, you know, we can't give up fire. So he pulls off the headdress and he throws it to Antelope. Antelope catches it. Antelope is running super fast. And right as Antelope's about to get killed by one of the fire people, Antelope throws it up to Rabbit. Rabbit catches it. Rabbit runs. So this goes on. This animal relay goes on forever until finally Coyote catches up to the first person in line again, grabs a fire, shoves it in a tree. And from then on, everybody can make fire from wood. Yeah. So that's how everybody can do, you know, the, the bow drill kindling. thing. Yeah. Right. Use kindling, whatever. So so forever, it's it's always in wood. One of the variations of this is there's there's bear who also has a fire stone that that a little a little bird comes in and says he's shivering and he can't, you know, he 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 can't warm himself up. So can he just stay and stay around the fire? 
and bear says, yeah, as long as you, as long as you pick my lice and the bird goes around and he's pecking at his lice. And every time he's pecking his lice, he goes down by his belt where the, where the strap is for the firestone yeah. and he pecks away at a strand a little bit, a little bit, finally steals it, flies outside, passes it. Same thing though. Relay, relay, relay. And it gets out to Fox who runs up a hill, throws it out to the, you know, seven or nine tribes, however many were in this, this area right. and, and spreads fire. So the idea is there's always this, there's always this animal relay and th- this same myth happens in, uh, there's, um, uh, the Bay of Bengal. Okay. So there were, there were pygmies in the Bay of Bengal. So we're talking other side of the yeah, planet, complete other side of the planet, other side of the planet, but literally animal relay, steel fire, animal relay, spread it out to the rest of the world. And the person who owned the fire, which for them was the most powerful God gets so mad that she goes up into the sky and stays there forever. So that's how we got fire. <laughs> Dude, that took me back to what you just described. Took me back to uh, the Aborigines doing fire dances when uh, I want to say it was like Apollo 3, maybe? Uh, John Glenn, I think, was like circling and he actually saw like what what was like aborigine tribes like doing signals and stuff and it was like actual embers like coming up into space while he was circ- or no it, was, it would have been mercury i think yeah mercury would have been the yeah one. circling circling the planet oh that's and, crazy mercury is the fire god too yeah and he actually they actually like it was in the right stuff they actually like this was this happened with an astronaut where he saw what was going on that's crazy yeah that's a huge fire so like it made me think and maybe in the right stuff, they're just trying. As far as I remember, because I was diehard into all this stuff, yeah, I remember reading about. Dane loved this. planes, planes yeah. and space stuff. Yeah. Even though I became an aerospace engineer, <laughs> yeah. and and maybe it was just in that movie they were trying to portray th- this. Yeah, like a connection. Right. Yeah, like but. a connection. Well, so so what I wanted to go into from this one is to relate everything. You know, relate. Relate the fact that the Creek Indians, the Thompson River Indians, you know, these really northern Indian Indians, Native Americans, and, you know, the Bay of Bengal, Australian Aboriginals yeah. have all of these similar stories. And this is what Joseph Campbell's whole thesis is, is that, you know, these all come from a similar place. And, you know, why is there the relay there? You know, and maybe it's like people working together to, to make fire together. You know, maybe it's the social aspect of fire. You know, I was trying to think, like, what, what is that? What is the relay for? Yeah. No, I mean, honestly, I, I don't. Okay. So, so one thing that, that I think is one, just think about like, what is, what does this mean? Right. So it's, uh, even in the Promethean story and and like Maui, when Maui steals fire, Maui steals it by tricking a bird. Yeah. He tricks a bird. And so it's always, it's kind of like fun. Right. It's like a joke. Like when do you run a relay? Mm-hmm. You run a relay when you're like, all right, let's like, yeah. let's like, let's race, let's <laughs> have some fun. fun. Yeah, it's a lot you know? of fun. And so, so I think part of it is this time period in history where there was no, you know, there was no wrathful and vengeful God. And we'll talk about that in fr- with respect to Nietzsche, but there was no wrathful and vengeful God. And it was almost like, oh, this is how we figured out this cool thing that we use every day. Right. Here's the fun way that we figured this out. And here's the, here's the way that we can frame this story to kids and to people to make us feel like we pulled one over on the gods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and like, almost, we're better than them. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Like they had, if something. we work together, we can figure out what they have. That's, that's where I think it comes from. Yeah. You know? And like, if you think about what the animals are in a lot of those, a lot of those tribes, the animal, each animal represented a tribe, right. you know, there was the, you were in the beaver tribe or you were in the, the porcupine tribe, whatever. So like each one of those probably, it probably would have been specific to your area, which animals you used. I was in the beaver tribe. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> I thought you were in the anteater tribe. <laughs> Both. I was a dual, Both. dual citizenship. <laughs> Oh man. So, so the way this, to me, the way that this goes, or the way that Joseph Campbell anyway plays this with Nietzsche is Nietzsche contrasted in The Birth of Tragedy. So that's the book club book for today, The Birth of Tragedy. It's a short book, um, but it's, it's like Nietzsche's, uh, Nietzsche's analysis of classical Greek drama and the Bible, Mm -hmm. right? And so in that, he's, he's, um, 
drawing pretty pretty sexist uh, parallels to the biblical fall and the th- the theory of fire. And what's the fall? The biblical fall. Oh, when uh, basically when men become uh, mortal. Yeah, yeah, right. So, and the reason that comes about is we we eat uh, we eat an apple. It's original sin if you're if you're Protestant. Yeah, we eat an it's apple. mortality if you're Orthodox. If yeah, right. It's stuff we weren't supposed to do. Yeah, and we believed a snake who lied to us, right. who also gets punished. The yeah. snake gets punished, and the people get punished. But um, Nietzsche saw this as like a, a womanish thing, a yeah. womanish. Uh, um, myth and and that the masculine side was the thiever of fire right so that that the masculine side is we we got one over we're the tough guys and we went up and we took on god and we brought it back i think that's a super western way to look at it i don't think that's how the native americans were trying to portray right. that that myth at all and the way that joseph campbell takes it is in a whole different direction which is more social so like a sociocultural thing where Think about the time periods that those myths come from, right? And so he's saying that the fire theft is a Paleolithic myth. Mm-hmm. So this is a, a myth that we know Native Americans were still telling when when Europeans got here. And there are traces of this all over the place. Australian Aboriginals still tell this stuff, you know. Um, but there are traces of it in pagan mythology and stuff like that. Um, whereas the biblical fall is a is a Neolithic yeah. myth right? right so this is when people started settling down and they were you know making communities making um eventually cities and we talked about writing, this writing stuff. writing yeah. writing yeah we talked about this weeks ago when we talked about how the priesthood literally comes from neolithic times right right and so 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 his big so so campbell's big thing is saying that this is a symbol of the comedy and and like the sort of like those hunter gatherer cultures and how they saw the world as just like crazy, open, fun, yeah. like here's what we can do, but still survival. Like right. we stole this fire, we survive with it. Right. Neolithic, kind of like controlling, wrathful, vengeant. We need to we need to control our culture and we need to be have the priesthood. And so he relates it back to okay, Nietzsche is also the guy who said God is dead. Yeah. And so if God is dead and God is the wrathful, vengeful God here, what is the next phase? Are we moving from the Neolithic into something new? And what's the new myth? Right. And that's like the big question, you know, or which one, which version of those do you, do you think is the most accurate? I, I mean, I'm still just thinking, dude, it, people really struggle to see that even when, when you're describing the Neolithic age is essentially when the Bible was created and, and spawned. And this was a, 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 uh, agricultural society and people were writing during that time people really 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 struggle to see that in a historical context in comparison to that paleolithic yeah yeah so like for me to i mean i i I can't answer what what is going on what's going to happen next what's the next myth and and what's i i mean I don't. I couldn't. I don't know. Yeah. Like for today, you know, I don't. I don't know. But I think it's it's really important for people that are studying that are religious to understand where that stems from. Like, yeah. what is the Eden? Because you learn about the Neolithic era and the Paleolithic era during, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade. But like, you don't ever you make don't those connections. ever connect this shit till you're twenty five, thirty years old, if you even do. Which this is like the most fun way to connect it. I yeah. feel like yeah, is telling stories like this. It's and you go, okay, this is a story from the Paleolithic. Right. Here's a story from the Neolithic. What's right. different here? Yeah. What's the difference, and why would it have to be different? Right. Like, think about it. Let's organize ourselves into groups. And what is you know even today? What's the modern? What is the modern version of fire? You know, what is that modern modern? power base that that can completely control everybody if because i mean essentially at that time that's what you got to think about is that is that fire was such a powerful uh powerful thing that everybody was controlled by who had the fire who had the fire and who had the water control yeah that's who dominated everybody so now it's like today like and i often bring this up and i've said this i don't know if i've ever said this in one of our podcasts but fire is is what causes people to love the tv and what causes people to love yeah, this know, right? so if you're if you sit around a fireplace or if, if you have a wood stove which we both have wood stoves and it's like or if you sit outside around a fire it's so fun 
Yeah. It's so fun Stars to just stare at it. Yeah. Staring at lights. <laughs> stare at the fire and, and you can talk and you cannot talk and you'll be comfortable with silence just like in front of a TV. Yeah. It's fun to watch TV. It's fun to see the lights flickering. And that's what draws people to it. And that's what Moms. draws Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, and it's like you sit there and that's what maybe that's what it is. It's the TV, it's cell phones because you're we're so infatuated with that that light flickering and, and the patterns that come out of it. And and when I sit outside around a fire, I, I get enthralled by it and I, and you have you get on the same wavelength as everybody else around you and it's like maybe today's fire is a cell phone. Maybe I know that's so generic and so hokey, but it could be. No, I think it makes sense. It's what draws the attention, you know, it's what draws the attention and honestly it's like what social gr- groups form around now. Right. Sadly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, you is that, that is the current myth. It's like, all right, well, and now who's who you know, so we've stolen the fire so that we could have a cell phone and cell phones are incredibly powerful, awesome tools, right. but they're also horrible tools at the same time. And it's like yeah. just like fire, dude, fire can decimate, ruin jungles, ruin woods, ruin kill people. Like right? yeah. it's horrible. Right. But it's also extremely powerful in a Survival. very positive way as well. And that's the whole thing yeah. with a cell phone too. It's the same shit. Yeah. Dude, this thing is the worst thing that has ever happened to me and the best thing that's ever happened to me. Right. Like I mean, outside of my kids being born and shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, we just talked about this the other day, how I see, like, young people now are viewing relationships that they have, even in groups, on a phone as equivalent or replacing um, relationships that they have in person. Yeah. And I think that that's like, okay, you've got, you've got all, probably about a million years of evolution in face-to-face social interaction groups yeah you can't there's no way that you can just suddenly assume no. this is going to take that take over that no. and so like it's a way to stay connected and it's like you know for us especially with like the evolutions group that's the whole point of it it's right. just another place to get some support maybe in an area that you don't get in person but that doesn't mean you don't need to have a group right that supports it, that you is in person. person yeah you yeah. have to yeah you have to and the reason Dude. that people are depressed is because they don't have and they support. don't have physical touch they don't have they don't have yeah. physical engagement they don't have like just physical interaction vagal vagal activation exactly (laughs) exactly you got to activate that vagus nerve people you got to tell stories actually telling stories sitting around a fire this is where stories came from sitting around a fire and entertaining each other this is a little off off topic but if you can think about when we're talking in a meeting and and we've got eight people in the room there's very few times that there's interruptions because people can read each other and they the only time that there's interruptions in my meetings is when Caitlin's telling me to shut up basically <laughs> and and it's like but everybody can read each other's body language so they know when someone's done talking and they and that's you know, so that's I mean, you can't read anybody's body language. <laughs> no, mine's the only one that matters. Yeah, right. <laughs> but when you have a meeting on Zoom or like online uh, and I you know. can't see it, all there's the interruptions time. all the time because there's no interaction face to face. Yeah. And that is be that's how the human humans have evolved, and that's where the problem is with what we're talking about right now is that we haven't evolved to converse and communicate through electronics. They're great for communication, but they can't replace because. They, if they replace it, there's never going to be that body language feedback that we need to be happy and to communicate successfully. I think this is going back to the Dave Chappelle thing. I think this is why stand-up comedy is great, is having such a resurgence. Yeah. Is because yeah. those are the masters of body language yeah. and language in general. Yeah. Is these are storytellers and like look at where look at where stand-up comedy is now. I mean, just watch Dave Chappelle's special in 2000, 2001 yeah. versus his last two are all stories. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. stand up is going to telling stories and like having a framework. Yeah. You know, like Russell Brand, he did his last two. It was a, it was like a framework of here is the arc of what I'm trying to get across to you. It wasn't jokes. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like Mitch Hedberg who I freaking love also. Yeah. But, it's just one liners. But it's but, like what we need right now yeah. is to relate to people who are able to. It's like theoretical, like in depth comedy versus yeah. one liners. Right. And one liners right. are still hilarious, but they're not as effective at changing culture. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And I think that that's, man, like if, if you're growing up. You know, and you're listening to this right now, and you and you don't have uh, a mentor who you see in person, and you don't have a social group who supports you in person. You fucking need one. You yeah. need to have both of those things because it's it's face to face interaction that's going to teach you 
how to be in an interview, yeah. right? How yeah. to be, how to be interviewed, how to be, how to prepare for an interview, how to talk on the phone to get your first interview yeah. in person, just all of the little things. And how to communicate things. with people in a workspace then or whatever exactly. it is so that you can exist. Exactly. Yeah. You just absolutely have to have these interact face-to-face interactions that are removed from what your, what your job is so yeah. that you can learn how to do it better. Right. That's probably what coaching is for, for you. Yeah. Uh, you guys a big yeah, part yeah, of it. For sure. And your athletes probably learn it from there too. Yeah. And cell phones. And cell phones. <laughs> so you got any you got any closing thoughts on uh No, I fire? think I think it I think as far as fire is concerned, I, I do believe that it, it could it could be linked to the cell phone now. And I think it's it's just one of those things that with just like with everything, there's something that's powerfully positive but can also be extremely or extraordinarily negative as well and it's just understanding the use and 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 the best form for that tool fire versus the cell phone right and it's like okay you know they're both good tools and they're both horrible tools at the same time and and as humans we've got to understand and recognize like what is the best way that we can effectively use it without it ruining our social existence yeah yeah agreed yeah because you know if if we don't then ragnarok will come and 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 loki's children fed the wolf will swallow the moon the midgard serpent will blow venom all over the people of the earth (laughs) see you next week that was good